Today we are looking at quadratic functions. Um, on the board we have a diagram and then there are questions coming from this diagram. This diagram is a graph of the function y is equal to 3 minus 2x minus x squared. Then when you look at it, you can see that this is our x-axis, this is our y-axis, and then this is the graph that has been plotted out of the function y is equal to 3 minus 2x minus x squared. Then we have these points, point P is the point at which the graph is cutting the x-axis. Point R is also another point where the graph is cutting the x-axis. At the points where the graph of y cuts the x-axis, it means that y is equal to 0 at that point. Meaning at the two points, P and Q, y is equal to 0. So we are asked to find the coordinates of P and the coordinates of R. So we'll start with those two. Those two can be actually answered uh, simultaneously. So, using this working space, if x is not equal to 0 there, but y is equal to 0, meaning that this equation can be equated to 0 because y is equal to 0. We say y is equal to 0. Then, our equation this it will be a quadratic equation, hence we have negative x squared minus 2x plus 3 is equal to 0. I had to just rearrange it. Nothing changes. Then, identify the coefficients a, b, and then also the constant c. Our a is going to be the coefficient of x to the power 2. When we say coefficient of x to the power 2, we are talking about a number in front of x to the power 2. The number in front of x to the power 2 in this case cannot be seen. We can only see the negative, meaning the coefficient is actually negative 1. So we say negative 1. The next coefficient is coefficient b. Coefficient b has to be the number in front of x to the power 1. Which one is x to the power 1 here? This is power 2. There there is no x. We can't see the power there. You can't see the power. Then it means that there x is to the power 1. So the number in front of this x to the power 1 is negative 2. Our b is going to be negative 2. The constant c. Constant c is a number that remains the same or a number without a variable x. In this case, 3 is our constant c. After doing that, you can now substitute this into the quadratic formula, which states that x is equal to negative b plus or minus root of b squared minus 4ac over 2 a. This is the quadratic formula. Please make sure that this bar graph, which stands for division, reaches this point. It should not end up to there. When it ends there, it means this negative b is over 1. But this 2a cutters for everything. It is the denominator for everything. Then you substitute into that. Your correct identification of this is very important. Your correct substitution into the quadratic formula is of great importance too. So, we we'll say x is now equal to negative b. Our b is negative 2. Remember, there's a negative there. There's another negative there. So, this negative will still be maintained. Negative, then there's a negative there. So, negative 2, close brackets, plus or minus roots b squared, our b is negative 2, so negative 2 to the power 2. Make sure that the negative and the number 2 are enclosed in brackets, then you raise to the power. Okay, then minus 4 times a, our a is negative 1, so negative 1, then times 3, 3 is there. Over 2 times a, 2 times a. Our a is negative 1, so negative 1. Like I said, the bar must be reaching throughout, which is the division. Then the root also 
must be enclosing everything like that, not ending up to somewhere. No, it must be enclose everything. From there, let's do the possible multiplications. Negative times negative, positive. So we have x is equal to 2 plus or minus root of negative 2 to the power 2 does not mean negative 2 times 2. It means this negative 2 is multiplying itself how many times? 2 times. So meaning negative 2 times negative 2 which will give you a positive 4. So we have a 4 there. Negative times negative positive. So we have a positive here. 4 times 1 times 3 will give you 12. So we have the number 12 like that. Then over 2 times negative 1 will give you a negative 2. So we have a negative 2 here. Negative 2 there. Then from here, you deal with what is in the root. 4 plus 12, 16. So this comes to x is equal to 2 plus or minus 16 over negative 2. I have to explain why we put plus or minus there. It means the square root of the number inside this root can be a positive number or a negative number. Hence, there should be two ways of mathematical operations, that is plus or minus. Then, what is the square root of 16? It's actually 4. Hence, we have x is equal to 2 plus or minus 4 over negative 2. There, we have two mathematical operations. Like I said, it is a two-way mathematical operations. And as such, from here, we are going to have two values of x. There will be x1, which is going to be equal to 2 plus 4 over 2. And then there will also be another x, that is x2, which is going to be equal to 2 minus 4 over 2. 2 plus 4 is 6. So this comes to 6 over 2. 2 into 6 is 3. Therefore, the first x is actually 3. So we'll write 3 there. For this one, 2 minus negative part, 2 minus 4 is going to give you a negative 2 over 2. Negative 2 over, sorry, this is negative. This is negative. This is also negative. The negative has not disappeared in any way, meaning this will be a negative 3. Okay? This is going to be a negative 3. And then here we have negative divided by negative positive. Hence, this will be 2 divided by 2, which will be 1. So we have a positive 1 and a negative 3 for the answers. After getting that, you have to come back to the diagram. On the diagram, the y graph is cutting the x-axis at two points, on the right and on the left of the origin. At the origin here, going to this side, it's positive. From the origin coming this side, it's negative. Meaning that the value of x at r should not be a negative number. It will be a positive number. And the positive number that we have here is this 1. So at r, x is equal to 1. 1, comma. Then at p, p is on the, on the left. So it has to be a negative. So at p, x is equal to negative 3, comma. Now, let's consider what are the values of y. We said that y is supposed to be 0 on the x-axis. If y is supposed to be 0 on the x-axis, then it means that at both points, y is equal to 0, 0. Hence, at p, the coordinates are negative 3, 0, r, 1, 0. From there, we have answered the question in A and B. So this was, like I said, they can be solved simultaneously. So this is for A and also B. We can get answers from the same. 
Then from there, we go to C. C, we are talking about the coordinates at Q. At Q, looking at the position of Q on the graph, it is a point at which the Y graph cuts the Y axis. And it is not cutting the Y axis at the origin, meaning the value of Y at that point should not be considered to be zero. The value of X is actually a positive Y because it is above. Then, in terms of X, throughout the Y axis, X is equal to zero. If X is equal to zero throughout the Y axis, then we are saying for C, X is equal to zero at this point. If x is equal to 0 at that point, then we can consider that y is equal to 3 minus 2 times 0 minus 0 to the power 2 because x is equal to 0. Then we have y is equal to 3. So the value of y at this point q is 3. So we have 3. What about x? We said x on the y-axis is equal to 0. So we have 0, 3. From there, we can now go to the last part, which is coordinates of x, the turning point. So please, as you can see, the board is not enough to accommodate everything. So at this point, you can just pause the video as you're watching. Then after that, you can still continue watching it. So let me remove that part so that we can go to the next part. Okay, now we have to consider the last part which is D. We are talking about the coordinates of the turning point. Coordinates of the turning point can be found in two different ways. So we can use the calculus way where we differentiate, or we can use the quadratic way where we use formula. So I'll use the two methods. Let me say D method one. Method one. If we have to consider that this is a turning point, then it means that at the turning point, the gradient is equal to 0. So y is equal to 3 minus 2x uh, minus x squared. That is our function. Then the gradient of this function should be equal to 0 at the turning point. So you use calculus. You differentiate this so what, that you find what we call the gradient function. So we say dy over dx is actually equal to, this 3 is a constant. When you differentiate it, it becomes 0. So this is a 0. The power of x here is 1. So you say 1 times negative 2. It will give you negative 2. Then x to the power 1 minus 1 is 0. Okay? Then this power here will multiply again the coefficient. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Then x, 2 minus 1 is 1. Then this means that we have, according to indices, any number of variable to the power 0 is equal to 1. This makes us also conclude that this x to the power 0 is equal to 1. Then we have a negative 2 times 1 minus 2 x to the power 1. We do not write the power 1. We ignore it. So we have x. Then from there, our dy over dx is going to be equal to negative 2 minus 2x. I said at the turning point, gradient is equal to 0. At this point, what we have found is the gradient function. Hence, this gradient function is actually equal to 0. Because at the turning point, gradient is equal to 0. Collect the like terms. You have negative 2x is equal to 0 plus 2. Negative 2x is equal to
equal to 2. Divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, you have this and that going, then x is actually equal to negative 1. This means that at the turning point, x is equal to negative 1. If x is equal to negative 1 at the turning point, what about y? Go back to the original function. You say y is equal to 3 minus 2 times x is equal to negative 1 times negative 1, then minus x squared, which is negative 1 to the power 2. From there, this is going to give you a 3 plus 2 minus 1. I'm sure you are able to follow that. Then at that point, we are going to have y is equal to 5 minus 1 is 4. So our x is this, our y is that. At the turning point, x is equal to negative 1, negative 1, comma, y is equal to positive 4, comma, positive 4, like that. I said this is method 1. We can also use method 2. Method, method 2. This is the calculus way. This is the quadratic formula way. At the turning point, x is equal to negative b over 2a. So, x is equal to negative b. What is b? According to what we have, b is negative 2. So, we are saying negative 2 over 2 times, what is a? According to what we have, a is equal to negative 1. Negative 1. Hence, we have x is equal to negative 2 over negative 2. At this point, x is equal to a positive 1. Why is it coming out as a positive 1? Why is it coming out as a positive 1? Why is it positive? There it's negative. Here it's negative. There it's positive. Is it supposed to be like that? This is negative b over 2a. Negative b over 2a. Okay. There. We made a mistake somewhere. So negative b this negative is already in the formula but remember there there is also another negative meaning that there was supposed to be a negative then negative two negative two like that i made a mistake there this negative is coming from the formula this negative is coming from there so we have negative times negative positive two times negative one negative two then x is going to give us a negative 1. Is this negative 1 different from the negative 1 which we have there? No, they occupy the same position on the number line. So it's correct to use that method. Then we have to find y. How do we get to y in the formula way? We are saying y is actually equal to 4ac minus b squared over a for a. That is the formula we use for y. Then you substitute. You say y is actually equal to 4 times a. Our a is negative 1. So negative 1. Then c. What about c? Our c is positive 3. So we have a 3. Then minus b squared. What is b? b is negative 2. Negative 2 to the power 2 over... 4 times a, which is negative 1. From there, when you multiply through, you are going to have y is equal to 4 times 3, 4. It will be a negative 4 there. It will be a negative 4 there. So then, if that is a negative 12, we have to say negative 12. Then, what about this? This is negative 4. Because this is 2 times positive, yeah, negative 2 times negative 2, positive 4 will come with this negative. So minus 4 over negative 4. From there, this will be negative 16 over negative 4, which will lead us to positive 4. Is this positive 4 different from that one? No, it's not different. Now, I don't know if it's just about me, but the way I see it, you can see I made a mistake. That was not deliberate. That was a mistake. The way I see it, it's very easy for someone to forget 
that they are supposed to be a negative there. Or even to just forget that formula and even this one. But for this one here, the way I see it, there is just one concept. The gradient at the turning point is equal to zero. So you find the gradient function and equate it to zero. When you equate it to zero, find the value of x. When you find the value of x, you substitute it into the function that you started with. You are not going to memorize this function. It's already given. You are not going to memorize this. You already know calculus how to differentiate. So I really go by this one. But this one is also okay. As long as you cannot forget something. If you forget the formula, you are doomed. If you do not substitute correctly, you are doomed. And, and mostly it's about forgetting the formula. As you can see, here I even went stuck. So this marks the end of the lesson. Uh, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll be notified every time a video is posted.